Arming America The Origins of a National Gun Culture is a discredited 2000 book by Michael A. Elzler on American gun culture. The book is an expansion of a 1996 Journal of American History article that uses falsified research to argue that guns were uncommon during peacetime in the early United States and that a culture of gun ownership arose only much later. It initially won the prestigious Bancroft Prize, but later became the first book in that prize's history to have its award rescinded. The revocation occurred after Columbia University's Board of Trustees decided that Belzilla had violated basic norms of scholarship and the high standards expected of Bancroft Prize winners. Thesis The central theme of Arming America is that United States' as gun culture arose during the 1850s and 1860s and that contrary to myth, it did not have its roots in United States' as colonial and frontier eras. The book holds that guns were uncommon during peacetime in the United States during the colonial, early national, and antebellum periods, when guns were little used and the average American's proficiency in use of firearms was poor. Elzler maintains that more widespread use and ownership of guns dates to the Civil War following advances in manufacturing and a consequent reduction in price in improvement in accuracy. Scrutiny the book garnered many enthusiastic professional reviews and won the prestigious Bancroft Prize in 2001. Because the book's thesis bore upon ongoing political controversies about gun control and the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution, gun rights advocates immediately attacked it. Actor Charlton Heston, then president of the National Rifle Association, called the book's argument ludicrous. Conversely, a review by Roger Lane in the Journal of American History called the book's research meticulous and thorough, and wrote that Belzler had attacked the central myth behind the National Rifle Association's interpretation of the Second Amendment. Lane declared Belzler's is evidence so formidable that, if the subject were open to rational argument, the debate would be over. Clayton Kramer, a historian, software engineer, gun enthusiast and early critic of Belzler, later argued that the reason why historians swallowed arming America's preposterous claims so readily is that it fit into their political worldview so well. Arming America said things and created a system of thought so comfortable for the vast majority of historians that they didn't even pause to consider the possibility that something wasn't right. Historian Peter Charles Hoffer, himself an advocate of gun control, lent support to Kramer's charge when, in a 2004 examination of the Belzler case, he noted that influential members of the historical profession had indeed taken strong public stands on violence in our society and its relation to gun control, for instance. The academics solicited for blurbs by Belzils' publisher Alfred A. Knopf were ecstatic in part because the book knocked the gun lobby. Belzler energized this professional consensus by attempting to play the professors against the NRA in a high-wire act of arrogant bravado, for instance. He replied to Heston's criticism by telling the actor to earn a Ph.D. before criticizing the work of scholars. He pointed out that Kramer was a longtime advocate of unrestricted gun ownership, while he himself was a simple scholar who had certain obligations of accuracy that transcend current political benefit. After Belzilla claimed he had been flooded by hate mail, both the American Historical Association and the Organization of American Historians endorsed a resolution condemning the alleged harassment. As Hoffa later wrote, Belzler was convinced that whether the entire profession agreed with his stance on gun ownership, surely academic historians would not let their expertise be impugned by a rank in partisan amateur like Kramer. In the end, however, the politics of the issue mattered less to historians than the possibility that Belzler might have engaged in faulty, fraudulent and unethical research, as critics subjected the historical claims of the book to close scrutiny. They demonstrated that much of Belzler's research, particularly his handling of probate records, was inaccurate and possibly fraudulent.
This criticism included noting several serious errors in the tables published in the book, as well as in the Journal of American History article, namely, that they did not provide a total number of cases and gave percentages that were clearly wrong. In two scholarly articles, law professor James Lindgren of Northwestern University noted that in arming America, Elzala had purported to count guns in about a hundred wills from 17th and 18th century Providence, Rhode Island, but these did not exist because the decedents had died intestate. Purported to count 19th century San Francisco County probate inventories, but these had been destroyed in the 1906 earthquake and fire, reported a national mean for gun ownership in 18th century probate inventories that was mathematically impossible, misreported the condition of guns described in probate records in a way that accommodated his thesis miscited the counts of guns in 19th-century Massachusetts censuses and militia reports, had more than a 60% error rate in finding guns listed as part of the states in Vermont records, and had a 100% error rate in the cited gun-related homicide cases of 17th-century Plymouth, M.A. Critics also identified problems with Belzolz's methods of citation. Kramer noted that Belzilla had misrepresented a passage by George Washington about the quality of three poorly prepared militia units as if his criticism applied to the militia in general. Kramer wrote, It took me 12 hours of hunting before I found a citation that was completely correct. In the intervening two years, I have spent thousands of hours chasing down Belzilla's citations. And I have found many hundreds of shockingly gross falsifications, emery investigation and resignation. As criticism grew, and charges of scholarly misconduct were made, Emory University conducted an internal inquiry into Belzils's integrity, appointing an independent investigative committee composed of three leading academic historians from outside Emory. Elzala failed to provide investigators with his research notes, claiming the notes were destroyed in a flood. The scholarly investigation confirmed that Belzolz's work had serious flaws, calling into question both its quality and veracity. The external report on Belzala concluded that every aspect of his work in the probate records is deeply flawed, and called his statements in self-defense prolix confusing, evasive, and occasionally contradictory, it concluded that his scholarly integrity is seriously in question. Belzala disputed these findings, claiming to have followed all scholarly standards and to have corrected all errors of fact known to him. Nevertheless, with his reputation in tatters, Belzala issued a statement on October 25, 2002, announcing the resignation of his professorship at Emory by year's end. Aftermath of the scandal In 2002, the trustees of Columbia University rescinded Arming America's Bancroft Prize, the first such action in the history of the prize. Alfred A. Knopf, publisher of Arming America, did not renew Belzils's contract, and the National Endowment for the Humanities withdrew its name from a fellowship that the Newberry Library had granted Belzler. In 2003, Arming America was republished in a revised and amended edition by Softskull Press. Belzilla continued to defend the book's credibility and thesis, arguing that roughly three-quarters of the original book remained unchallenged. Historians who initially admired Arming America ceased to defend Belzilla. The nationally prominent historian Gary Wills, who had enthusiastically reviewed Arming America for the New York Times, later said, In a 2005 interview on C-SPAN, I was took. The book is a fraud, Wills noted that Belzler claimed to have consulted archives he didn't and he misrepresented those archives, although he didn't have to do that, since he had a lot of good, solid evidence, Wills added, people get taken by very good con men, historian Roger Lane who had reviewed the book positively in the Journal of American History, offered a similar opinion. It is entirely clear to me that he's a made up a lot of these records. He's betrayed us. He's betrayed the cause.
It's 100% clear that the guy is a liar and a disgrace to my profession. He's breached that trust. Historian Pauline Mayer reflected that it seemed historians had ceased to read carefully and critically, even in the awarding of book prizes. As Hoffer concluded, Belzolz's condemnation by Emory University, the trustees of the Bancroft Prizes, and Knopf provided the gun lobby with information to blast the entire history profession, even though H. Law, the Omohundro Institute, the OAH, and the AHA rushed to his side and stated principled objections to the politicization of history. They hesitated to ask the equally important question of whether he had manipulated them and betrayed their trust. Editions of the book, Arming America. The Origins of a National Gun Culture ISBN 0-375-701982 Arming America The Origins of a National Gun Culture 2D ed. ISBN 1-932360-07-7